Hello, oh, sir. No, I'm okay. Good to see you. Hi. underneath here we'll have our feet in the way. It's okay. We'll make sure we got it. I had a winter jacket on outside. All good. Twitter, you're going live? Yes. Okay, good. I've already got 14 in already. At the last one, I was up to 155. Was How many members do you have? Um, followers, I've got 790 now. Oh, I don't need, I don't manage Facebook. Somebody else does in my group. So these are on Facebook, right? Yeah, it's on Facebook. But on Twitter, we had 150. I think you guys were up to 150 sometimes too. Facebook exposure is like rainbow. Is it? Is it? I just don't like using Facebook. I think Twitter's easier. Hey. Yeah. Spot here if you need a spot in front. Oh, you got a spot for me? I think so. No one's no, playing it. That is cool. Uh, please save that for me because it's pretty cool in here. Yeah, I'm streaming on my channel right now. On YouTube? Yep. Excellent. Okay. It's live on YouTube. Good. So we got all three covered. Ah, indeed. Indeed. I look at Instagram, but it doesn't keep it afterwards. The fact that even CBC is here says something. Well, they followed um, the liberals around all day. Of course. Well, no, because you saw that uh, they actually uh, Trudeau was actually at a rally of Lee's recently. Yesterday, right. he got booed the fuck out, man. He's only freaking out because of this investigation. But that was with all of the buses of people bringing in liberals. Exactly. That should tell you something. Right. I know. <laughs> no, it looks dangerous. Look at this. Yeah. They moved Laura right next to Jack. That's good. So they're starting to cut the other candidates loose. Cutting out of the airport. That's good. Well, it's kind of like in the weightlifting competitions. You know, you want to be by the, the strongest one that's getting most attention. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's kind of like that. One of those 
those uh, Molson crashed ice things and they race down the ice. You put the two packs in the middle. That's right. It looks like some random So this is my spot right here? Oh, uh, right here, yep. They got the independent game this time too, right? Valentine Moon is running independent. There's another independent like that's not running. I don't think that's a real person. He's a Green Party guy that's not running for the Greens because they're not running a federal, federal uh, candidate this time. Valentine Moon. He has one of those adult novelty stories. <laughs> Except the Moon, that used to be W O O. <laughs> Valentine Moon. So Rick Flair would name his kid. Woo! Valentine Greg Valentine Woo! Woo! I'm just sitting over there. <laughs> I can put it under my seat. Why wouldn't you have a tablet or a, a laptop? 
this and that's brutal. Flip phone versus a smartphone, right? Exactly. So they, they're going flip phone. So do you have all the printed notes for her? I do, Good. but of course, finding something in a giant stack of paper, yep. uh, not that easy. Yep. You know, whereas you can just enter a search query right. and yeah. So very stupid. I mean, why wouldn't they want good answers? I agree. Should be open, or at least they should express it ahead of time. Well, and make it super clear. Um, what about somebody has a smartphone up there? Is that permitted as opposed to a laptop? Feelings and ideas known without being disrespectful to others. 
We ask them to take responsibility for their past and present behavior, speech, and actions, and we ask them to stand against incivility when they're faced with Similarly, the expectations I provide for them of what they can expect from me was to address incivil behavior, to name it, and to moderate in an impartial way that respects dialogue, to enforce debate, enforce debate rules equally, to hold all candidates accountable by challenging them to speak the truth and to act with integrity. I will treat all candidates equally in regards to the complexity of the questions and in application of the debate rules, and be respectful in interacting with each other and with the audience. Finally, I did share some things that I called reasonable decorum that I was hoping that you and the audience could also find. And that was to be respectful of each other as audience members and as a community member. To be respectful of the candidates and of the model. To refrain from creating disturbances that may impact other audience members who are here to learn, to share, to treat, to take responsibility for their own behavior, speech, and actions, to speak out against incivility, and to practice active listening when listening to the candidates, and to seek to understand, and not necessarily to challenge, but to understand, and through that understanding, create a stronger, broader community for everyone. Again, I wanted to thank you all for coming here today. In terms of format, we're going to be asked, offering each candidate an opportunity to make a two-minute introduction, followed by questions that you've submitted, and I have a pile here that we've gone through looking for general themes that we think reflect the questions that are being asked, and then we're concluding with a one-minute each with closing remarks. So we're going to start. We pulled at random the order for which we'll be speaking today. The first candidate is Jay. Okay. Hello, uh, my name is Jay Shen. I thank the Burnaby Interagency Council for arranging this uh, debate. Uh, today's theme is on how we can make Burnaby a community for all residents. My answer to this is that people need to feel secure. A big part of security is being financially secure. Whether you are retired or working, the, the Liberal government has been eroding your financial security. Do you notice how everything is getting more expensive? From gasoline to restaurants to groceries. I want to stop this and promote policies to make life more affordable for people here in Burnaby and across the country. I came to Canada at an early age as an immigrant and am living the Canadian dream. I grew up in Burnaby and worked hard for my family grocery store and worked hard from, through university to get my degrees in engineering and law. As a business lawyer, I brought investments into Burnaby and Canada and which has created sustainable, good-paying jobs. We all know the Liberal government has been mismanaging the public finances in their term in office. Look no farther than the 4.5 billion they spent on the pipeline. And even this, they overpaid for. This is money for you and I would pay in the form of higher taxes. By no means is this the only way the Liberals have made your life less affordable. Do any of you out there use monthly transit passes? Just remember, the Liberals took away the transit tax credit, making your life that much more less, that much less affordable. Everything, every spending promises you hear, every bit of government mismanagement leads to the same story. You pay for it with higher taxes. When the Liberal government raises taxes and increases the cost of living for everybody, life becomes less affordable. Thank you, Jim. Thank you very much. Our next speaker is Valentin. Bonsoir, mes amis. Tadakonehao. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Valentine Wu, uh, the independent candidate for the coming federal by election. Uh, my independent means I work only for you, not any parties. Your voice, my action. Your voice is, is more important. Speak out to be heard, united to be strong. I can help. So I'm here to run for the job as a member of parliament. So I went to the website of the House of Commons. What, what are the responsibilities of MP? Talking about 
and explaining the government policies, listening to ideas, proposals, and uh, complaints, reconciling opposing viewpoints, getting action all of government, explaining or examining how government is doing. So that are the responsibilities of the job we are wrong for. Okay, so uh, if I were elected as an uh, MP, I will share with you one principle, two promises, three focuses. One principle is honest and strong. We have to be honest, face the reality, have to be strong, not so weak. And two promises. One is I will donate half of my annual salary of MP to put the South, non-profit, charitable organization. And I will spend at least half of our time to face directly with you, people. And the three focuses is, is I talk about this. First is money, second is safety, third is power. What is money? Develop a sustainable economy. That's the real sustainable money, high quality. Safety is improve law, improve law enforcement and protect the vulnerable. Thank you very much. Okay, power is huge and work together. Thank you. Our next speaker is Marley. Social inclusion is this evening's theme, and I'm very pleased to be included here tonight. Our message of unity and working together as Canadians first is resonating throughout our country, and it's blazing a new trail in Burnaby South, except with the Canadian Union of Postal Workers, who banned me from their nonpartisan town hall debate. I hope there's no mistake in delivering my flyers this week because we will be checking. The problem with some people's version of inclusion is they use it as a weapon to muzzle those who don't share their views. That is not how we do it at the PPC. Yeah. The ideological left has lost the battle of facts and ideas. So now they think that their feelings should silence their opposition. They want me to be silent, and that's not going to happen. I will speak the truth, no matter how strange this may seem to my opponents, who only tell fairy tales. They talk out of both sides of their mouth. In tonight's inclusive debate, we have liberal Richard Lee, whose party has been spending Canadian taxpayer money like drunken sailors and ruining the Canadian economy so that now we have 46% of Canadian families that are within $200 of insolvency. Not a good situation. The PPC believes that we must help Canadians first. We have NDP Jagmeet Singh, who believes that we need more taxes and more overspending, so our children will be crushed under a mountain of debt. Our kids deserve better, Mr. Singh. Lastly, we have Conservative Jay Shin, who thinks that telling Canadians that it's not my place here to state what my position is. Those were his words. When his position happens to be politically inconvenient. Sorry. But avoiding the tough questions is not what Canada needs right now. Thank you. What Canada needs is Maxine Bernier and the People's Party of Canada. Thank you. Yeah. Homelessness, 
serious concerns about not having a home. There's folks that are low income and can't find a place to rent. Even professionals, young professionals are leaving the province because they cannot find a place. Forget owning a home, they can't find a place to rent as well. The seniors, families, everyone is struggling. Now, faced with this crisis, Mr. Trudeau and the Liberal government just made up numbers. They made up numbers in the house to say how many people they helped. And then when confronted with that made up number, they said, okay, we were just exaggerating because it sounded better. They literally said that. They just exaggerated the numbers because it sounded better. Now that's not gonna help people out. That's not gonna make people's lives better. That's disregarding and neglecting the concerns that people are faced with. What we need to do is start building homes again. We used to build homes federally. We used to invest and build affordable cooperative housing, public housing, non-market housing, affordable homes that people can actually rent and own. That's the future. That's what we've got to do. And while we're on it, we also need to address the fact that healthcare is becoming more and more unaffordable. We need to invest in healthcare so that people have the services they need. And we need to invest in a green economy so that we can build great jobs and also reduce our emissions. That's the future. concern. And they have the power, and I think the new mayor, Mr. Hurley, I've met with him. He's very gracious. He will make it happen for you here in Burnaby. This election is not about Burnaby. This election is about Canada. And, and I couldn't see any of the parties doing what I wanted to do. And I formed Canada Fresh. I've been across the country twice. I've seen the forest fires burning. I've watched the planes sitting at Cold Lake and the federal government and the armed forces doing nothing. I was in Vernon when they rolled in there to help mop up this summer. We need to basically take charge. We have an armed forces and I want to see them doing civil work in Canada for four years. We have to rebuild this foundation. One of my platforms, and my platform will be in its, entire, in its entirety in the local newspaper the Thursday before the election. Make sure you have a look at it. Now I realize I'm only speaking to about a dozen people here because everybody's come to support their candidate. But Canada Fresh, I didn't run in this election to, to get elected. I might get elected, it looks pretty good. But I came, I came to influence you to encourage the other parties to adopt some of my ideas. All right, thanks. That's what, I'm sorry? That's time. Oh, thanks. Thank you. Our final candidate to do their opening remarks is Richard. Uh, thank you, Stephen. Uh, good evening. I'm uh, very pleased to be here today and uh, in this uh, meeting as well as uh, to see many, so many familiar faces uh, in this in audience. Uh, I have been living in uh, Burnaby for uh, 32 years uh, with my family. And I have been an uh, MLA for uh, 16 years, all terms, uh, serving the community. Uh, I have uh, worked with many on public organizations, uh, including the Burnaby uh, uh, Community Association, Society, and also, uh, we, I have been uh, also looking forward to uh, to work with uh, many uh, non profit organizations in Burnaby again. Um, I know that uh, Burnaby South actually need a strong voice in Parliament. Uh, I want to be that voice uh, to address your concerns, including affordable housing, uh, poverty uh, reduction, 
uh, transit, uh, job creation, infrastructure funding, as well as uh, ensure, ensuring that we have a, uh, a clean environment for our kids and grandkids. Uh, in 1986, I, I got married and moved to uh, Burnaby. Since then, I live here. And I have been uh, uh, having a family here, three kids, and, uh, and my, one of my uh, sons is still in this IT. Uh, so I, I'm in, uh, in this community. They, they were all born and raised uh, uh, in this area. Uh, over the years, uh, I have the honor of uh, serving the community and also listening to the concerns of the people uh, in this area. Uh, not only in public life, uh, as I mentioned, I also, uh, before uh, my office, uh, joined, joined, joined as an MRA. I, I actually uh, work with uh, many non-profit organizations, including the Burnaby uh, Body Culture Society, and uh, thank you, etc. Thank you very much. <laughs> So now the candidates will be asked a series of questions that were brought to, to us from uh, you as the audience. And the first question will be answered first by Valentin. And the candidates have one minute to answer these questions. The first question is, how, how will you contribute to reconciliation in Canada and in our community? That's reconciliation with Indigenous peoples. Your voice. Your voice is very important. Speak out and communicate effectively. That's my solution. But your voice, your solution is more important. When I worked at Rich Auction, Rich Brother Auction, he as a solution architect, my boss told me, one thing, do not try to push your solution. What you want is our solution. Okay? People work together. The answer, that's a lot of problems, issues. I live in here over 15 years. I think Ms. Only, only Mr. Singer and I can vote. Singer moved here last November, right? But I'm living here over 15 years, I can vote. I know all issues here, I didn't talk about specific issues. Because I know solution is among yours, not sufficient, not the government. You have a solution, you speak out about the housing. Somebody think it's affordability, some things think it's an investment. How we let those money go to some investment, right? Thank you, Valentin. That's wonderful. <laughs> so just a reminder, the question is, how will you contribute to reconciliation in Canada and our community? Laura Lynn, you're next. I had the extreme honor of uh, meeting Chief Kenny Blacksmith in North Battleford, Saskatchewan recently. I discussed with him over several hours uh, what are the continuing issues uh, between uh, the indigenous and coming to reconciliation in our nation? And I found out that some of the things that are still hurtful is that the government has made promises that are still not being honored, uh, and some treaties are still not being honored. I don't know all of the particulars about that, but I do believe it's important that when word has been given to any of our Canadian uh, citizens that we must honor that. In our home, we've had many indigenous uh, youth that came and stayed with us. They were from tragically broken families in some cases. We love them. I still get calls. Uh, precious boy named Michael, uh, if, if you knew what had happened in his family, you wouldn't even know how he could still function. He's such an amazing kid, but Thank he you, calls me and uh, we need to reconcile what has been promised to those people. that there's been a lot of harm done, historic and ongoing. Indigenous communities face and suffer incredible levels of inequality. And this is not a coincidence, this is the impact of colonialization. And I've been able to see up close and personal some of the, some of the impacts that this has had on communities. Whether it's in northern communities that water have water that's been poisoned because of companies that have left behind mercury contamination and there's about beautiful lakes and rivers, but none of that water is drinkable because it's been poisoned. 
whether it's communities that have schools that have mold growing in those schools, something that we would never expect in any other city. Here in Burnaby South, we know that none of our schools would ever have mold, and if there was ever that circumstance, we would immediately build a new school. The basic things that we require in society are the things that indigenous communities have the right to have. And we've got to be serious about it. Broken promises and broken words are not good enough. We need to commit to action and that's what we need to do. Thank you. I'm not going to repeat what has already been said. But, um, in my life experience, when I was 20 years old, I got elected to the North Vancouver City Council, and we had to deal with the Squamish ban. And I wrote a paper at that time that suggested the Squamish ban should become a municipality. It fell on deaf ears. And here, just a few months ago, they announced that they're going to have a council. I don't know if anyone in the audience read that, but all the bands in Canada, in my opinion, need to become municipalities so that they can participate on a level playing field and get the funding that municipalities get in the normal course in Canada. They, they have to join Canada. We're all Canadians. We're all Canadians. <laughs> Uh, the Liberal government, uh, uh, takes very seriously the relationship between uh, indigenous people and, and the government. Uh, there has been a, a, a wisely, water has wisely uh, lifted uh, uh, up to uh, 78 of those uh, wisely actually, the water has wisely actually lifted, so the water, make sure the water is safe. And as well as uh, another uh, 62 will be lifted uh, in soon. Um, myself, I my grandfather actually farmed in a lost river land uh, in, uh, in, in UBC Bandai area for over 30 years. So uh, our family has some connection to the Aboriginal community as well. So I think it's important to respect each other and to learn about uh, the culture of each other. Uh, that's very important. Uh, myself, I also attended uh, the Native Education Center. I know that education is very important for the Aboriginal community, so how to help them? Uh, the, the people to get, the youth especially, to get the necessary skill training uh, in, in our community. Thank you. That's the best important. Thank you. Thank you. Jack. Hi. Um, I believe in, uh, I believe that we need to uh, respect the uh, contributions made by our indigenous people here in Canada. And uh, there has been a lot of uh, past wrongdoings, and, and, and we, those have to be recognized and, and reconciled. We have a Canada that I know has made a lot of progress in this regard. And there we have Supreme Court decisions that respect the rights of uh, uh, First Nations people. Uh, we need to consult them with them and accommodate them in accordance with the, uh, the, uh, the uh, Supreme Court judgments in this regard. So we have to uh, respect the law that we have that as laid by the, by the court and we have to make sure that the rights of indigenous people are fully respected. Thank you. Thank you, Jake. So our next question will be answered first by Laura Lynn. And the question is, women make up 51% of the Canadian population. Yet a woman in Canada is killed every seven days by an intimate partner. One in five Canadian women have experienced violence. As an MP, how would you address the issue of violence against women? It's very true that uh, the point at which a woman is most vulnerable is when she actually decides that she's going to leave an abusive situation. She's actually in more danger than when she is in the home. I believe this is very, very serious. Uh, there, are, there are very important strategies that have to be taken in order to defend and uphold women. Women in these circumstances uh, feel like they are powerless. They feel like they have nowhere to go and often finding solutions and even to the point of shelters or uh, women's safe uh, shelters 
are not uh, even available with no beds. It's an increasing issue. I think we have to deal with what is going on in, in, with respect to men and women's uh, roles in our society. We have to deal with the, the factor that they need to have uh, full assurance that if there is an issue, they need to be supported and believed when these things happen. Sometimes churches you, have not been the ones who supported them, but it needs to happen. Not only are women half, more than half the population, the majority of women have experienced violence in our country. The majority of women in our country have experienced some form of violence in their lives. That is a staggering fact. And it completely, it's so wrong, there's no words for it, that so many people have to face violence, whether it's in the workplace, in the family setting, that this violence exists in our society. Uh, there's many ways we can tackle it. We need to have supports in place. Women who are leaving abusive relationships have to have the supports. We also need to get at one of the root causes for violence against women is uh, an inequity in power. And that's pay equity. We need to ensure that we ensure that women are paid equally in our society. We also need to address some of the systemic problems. When we have, when we have housing crises, they impact those marginalized more. And that means women who are often impacted by the housing crisis. We need universal daycare. We need to, impose, we need to implement systems and, and, and processes that will actually support women and lift them up uh, who are facing these Thank terrible you, Jay, you. Terry, the most capable people I know are women. And, and they actually, I think, do a very good job of supporting each other. We just need the physical facilities for them to step into in a moment of crisis, but more than anything, Canadians have to support each other. I'm sorry to be emotional about this, but we have to support each other. You can see your neighbor. I've done it a few times in my life. I haven't been burned, but I'll do it again tomorrow. We have to support each other. Over the years, I've been working with, uh, uh, say, uh, the uh, Transition House, uh, now it's called Action Transition House, uh, to address the issue of uh, helping uh, women uh, uh, fleeing violence uh, from, from, from the family, uh, including the children. So uh, the second stage, first stage, and, and first stage, uh, they, they are doing a very good job. Uh, so we need to support the organization like that uh, locally, uh, helping uh, women uh, against the violence. As well as, uh, as mentioned, the eco work or eco pay, that this is also important to raise the status of a woman. Uh, so the local government is uh, moving forward to have a proactive pay equity uh, legislation. So this will help a uh, woman uh, attain, attain economic uh, power as well. Uh, of course, uh, we all respect, I think the, uh, this uh, program uh, to address the Aboriginal communities especially. This is a, a good program. Uh, it's called uh, Thank uh, you, the Highest Program. Thank you. <laughs> Next is Jay. Violence against women uh, it's, uh, it's, it can, it cannot be tolerated as, as a society. Any kind of violence against one another, any kind of uh, physical force used in our society is not, cannot be tolerated. We need to uh, protect the weak, not just the women, but the children uh, from any kind of uh, violence that can be imposed on them. We need to allocate our resources to make sure we have the proper resources, facilities, and programs available to support the weak in our community. Having spent $4.5 billion for a pipeline will not allow us to allocate those resources where it's needed to protect our most vulnerable members of our community. Thank you. Uh, 
and it's, uh, I think, related to the two points I haven't finished yet. Is, uh, first is the safety. I think uh, through safety, which means we should improve the law enforcement and protect the vulnerable. And uh, the local people, who we also may remember, the 2017, a girl, an Indian girl, was killed in the Central Park, right? When year after, there are two life-standing uh, accidents that we call the Primo happened in the Central Park again. So where is our law enforcement? If RCMP is not effective, dismiss it. Just like Suri said, how about Burnham? Let me think about it. So improve the law enforcement. It's not a museum icon anymore. We have to use it effective and protect the vulnerable. Same thing. And the next one is power. We should respect and work together. The women united, then you will get more power. That's my answer. Thank you. So our uh, next question uh, will be Jay Wheat, who will be answering first. Thank you. Many Burnaby residents are struggling with inappropriate, inadequate, and unaffordable housing. How will you, as the MP for Burnaby South, bring solutions to our community? Yeah, without a doubt, uh, the number one issue that I hear at the doorsteps uh, when I'm at community events is the, the housing crisis. It's truly a crisis. And it's, it's hitting people in all walks of life. I remember me meeting with a family, and they told me that they've got a home, but they're worried that their kids will never be able to have a home or even rent a home or rent a place to live in the city that they've grown up in and that they work in. So what we need to do is we need to start building homes again. Back in the 70s, back in the late 40s, our government at the federal level used to invest in housing. We used to build houses, we used to build homes. We need to do that once again. I've, I've announced a, a bold initiative. We need to build half a million affordable units across this country non-market, cooperative housing. We need to build these units so that people can have housing. This has got to be a priority. We need to make sure that everyone in our country can access housing. It's a fundamental necessity in our society, and this government has left people behind. They're making up numbers, they're making up things that they've done when they haven't delivered what people need. I'm committed to doing that. Thank you, gentlemen. Can they get housing wrong? Yes. Hey, how can they get it wrong? And you voted MEP all this time. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, housing is a very important issue. I have three children. I know that uh, for young people to afford the housing in low maintenance is uh, a challenge. Yeah. Uh, the NDP uh, spent, uh, they don't have a plan actually, that's no financial research how to back up that, that plan. Uh, so, Liberal, instead, we have a plan. This is a 10 year, $40 billion housing, national housing strategy. And including that is uh, 100,000 new units across Canada, uh, repairing some uh, 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 affordable housing units, uh, including co ops and senior homes. And also for the families, uh, it's up to $2,500 per year per household uh, for rent subsidy, direct check to your the household. So I think those kind of uh, initiatives will help us uh, increase the supply and also maintain some of this affordable housing in uh, Burnaby, especially in South Burnaby. I hope to bring those dollars back to, to, to South Burnaby. Thank you. For uh, the uh, uh, Liberal candidate and, and NDP government to uh, 
talk about their housing strategy, I find it to be quite disingenuous. Um, frankly, frankly, back in 2015 when the Liberals campaigned, uh, they've uh, had many, many housing promises which they did not fulfill any, any one of them. And for Mr. Singh to stand here to say that he's going to build 500,000 homes throughout Canada in 10 years, why not a million? Why not two million? Same numbers without telling us how much it's going to cost the taxpayers, I think that's been totally irrespons ir irresponsible. What we need to do is to make sure that we lower taxes so that we can get ahead and not just get by and make sure we can invest in our businesses, in our families, to make sure that we can make, we can have our children living here and, and have, have better jobs for them. Thank you. Hey, the question is about housing, right? The housing, yes, it's around uh, appropriate, adequate, and affordable housing. Okay. Uh, so I think that the, I see the same thing. So your voice is very important. The answer is among yours, not us. We are serving you, provide support. But I can share with you. So my thinking is that the money issue is to develop a sustainable economy. That will solve the housing, poverty, environment, investing. So housing, some people cannot buy. But some part of the residents, they want to take advantage of it. They want to sell the housing, not one million, one billion. They want that. Holy cow, think about them. Because they have money, they want to invest somewhere. How are how gonna you let them invest? You develop a sustainable economy, new economy, let the money go their way. So sustainable economy is you develop different types of housing, not marketing, right? Every type, that's sustainable, not just the market owners, ownership, co-op, housing, everything. So I think you have answers. Because all of our talk is from my friends. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. We are here to stand for the federal nomination, not provincial. Housing is a, uh, a provincial legislated uh, issue. And so what will really help is the plan of the People's Party of Canada put forward by Maxine Bernier to lower taxes, to repeal the carbon tax, to abolish capital gains tax, to pipelines approved, to abolish interprovincial trade barriers and get people back to work, to improve foreign policy focused on security and prosperity. We need to care. When you are a leader of, of the entire NDP party, why are you talking about housing, which is provincial? Why are you not talking about lowering taxes? Because your party platform wants to raise taxes. If you care about the people of Canada, then start caring about making real promises to the people.
taking very seriously of the cost uh, border safety issue. Uh, not, not unlike, like, unlike the uh, conservative government, uh, they cut the funding actually by in the order of uh, 290 million dollars uh, uh, for the Canadian Border Service agents. We, we actually uh, restored some of the funding, uh, including uh, 173 million dollars. So to ensure that we have a proper control of our border, and also uh, to, to uh, public screening and, and helping some of the process uh, across the border. Um, for the as asylum uh, claimings uh, recently, uh, the government is uh, taking action to uh, strengthen some of the uh, uh, ideas uh, on, on, on security uh, issues, uh, as well as uh, we, we know that we cannot give a free ticket to any, anyone claiming refugee status. For the true refugee, they will get the help. Hi, my name is Bernie to uh, Canada. I came here uh, with, as a little child with, uh, with my parents. I, I'm all for legal immigration. We need to, uh, Canada is built on immigration and we have to recognize that and we have to make sure that immigration continues to be a vital part of uh, Canada's growth. What I'm against is against uh, illegal immigration, illegal border crossers coming to Canada, putting a strain on our immigration process. That makes it difficult for proper immigrants to come here and help build this country. Uh, we have Liberal government, with their, under their program, they have the family sponsor program where they have to shut down the, the, the uh, internet uh, a CICS website after 10 minutes because quota was already filled. Why are they processing tens of thousands of uh, asylum seekers at our taxpayers' cost at the cost of all our future? Children, thank you. Refugee, I think it's a very important issue we are facing. And uh, people forgot. There are statistics say that over fifty-one percent, right? Say right, uh, agree to review the current uh, policy. And uh, I try to make it clear: anti-immigrant or anti-refugee uh, refugee is not equal to anti-refugee uh, uh, or anti-immigrant policy. Different. Don't mix it up. Okay. And uh, I think people speak out is that we need to review the current uh, system. I agree with that. Because people give us the power, these politicians should listen to the people and do not make any political issue, law, legal and illegal are different against the law and improve the law and based on law are different. What means law? Law you have to bear, otherwise you put in jail. Right? That's the law means, we have to be serious. Okay? And, uh, uh, and also Canadian is same as non-Canadian, right? People's value, right? We put the Canadian first. We have to protect the great lady Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. is not the issue. The issue is we do need to know who they are. We do, we do need to understand that there are uh, some people who could enter our country who might not share our values. Case in point, Marissa Shen. She's a 13-year-old girl that was murdered right here in Burnaby South in Central Park. I grew up when, when I was 14, I spent hundreds of hours with my friends. Uh, we goofed off a lot and we spent a lot of time in that park. That precious girl was, uh, her life was taken from her by a refugee. Not all refugees would do such a heinous act, but surely we need to know who is coming into our country. When you are letting 40 to 50,000 people illegally jumping the borders, how do we know who that is? Would we let those same people into our home to sleep on our couches right Thank next to the bedrooms of our children? We need Thank to be safe.
I don't take any pleasure in saying this, so I don't want any applause for saying this, but I'm disgusted by some of the values being espoused on this that I've just heard. It's disgusting to hear that. Now, we're, we're talking about refugees. We're talking about people who are fleeing danger. These are people fleeing death. These are people fleeing serious situations. We need to, we need to have a caring heart, a caring mind when it comes to people that are fleeing such dangerous situations. And of course we should welcome our hearts and our minds to people coming in, but we can't allow divisive rhetoric to purposely pit one against another. People are clapping when people say we need to turn away illegals. I didn't hear anyone clap when we talked about how our country is built on immigration. Our country is built on immigration. We should celebrate that. We don't need divisive politics that are put one against another. We don't need to Suicide is the second leading cause of death amongst youth in Canada. Aboriginal youth are five to six times more vulnerable, and gay and lesbian youth are six times more vulnerable. As an MP, what will you do to support Canada's youth? Uh, there are many uh, non-profit organizations uh, actually uh, addressing some of these issues. Uh, the government uh, need to uh, uh, increase the support uh, for those uh, uh, organizations doing the good job. But uh, I think we have to address the, the fundamental issue as well. Uh, why are we talking to uh, suicide? Uh, one is, I think, is how to connect uh, the culture uh, in the Aboriginal community to the community uh, in general. And another is the education, how to uh, enhance their skills uh, and in our society so that they can have uh, proper jobs. And another, another is uh, uh, culturally uh, connected with, with uh, each other. I think, I think we need to, uh, to be uh, more compassionate uh, to, to the people whose home is here originally. So uh, reconciliation and those kind of actions will help, but fundamentally is the respect to each other. Thank I think you. that will help. Thank you. I have uh, three teenage daughters, and so uh, children or youth suicide is a big concern for me. And I would, we need to make sure that we have proper resources to help with the troubled youth and so that they can get the proper help that they need. My concern is that we may not have the resources available at, given the way the today's Liberal government overspends our taxpayers' money. When you spend $1 million too much on a pipeline that way, where they don't even have a proper plan to get it built, that means money that cannot be used on our youth. So therefore, we have precious resources and we need to make sure that we allocate it and use it efficiently and use it where it's needed the most. And one of those areas on our youth to make sure that they have a safe and bright future. about the funding from the federal government. Uh, I once worked as a job mentor uh, at Success to help new immigrants find a job. So uh, later, after uh, several years, uh, they did it looking for me. And uh, by chance, I met them. They said the federal cut the funding. So I think, uh, why are they cut the funding? Same as uh, a lot of uh, vulnerables, they need some help from the government. So I was, uh, I know that the city of Bonnie had a lot of cash in banks. But I think I do not like this. I want the government to be poor, citizens to be rich, right? So why, why, why is money is not used to help those uh, uh, people that need help? The like the homeless and the disabled, retired, low income, right? Kids from drugs and marijuana. So all those kinds that need the government money, funding. So I like to say it again, I want the government to be poor people, citizens to be rich and happy. Thank you. Thank you. I think we have a national crisis going on. I think 
that we've all lost our identity. When we have a leader that uh, doesn't think that Canada has a true identity, from coast to coast to coast, people are not encouraged to be patriotic. We don't know who we are. Our values are falling uh, to the ground. Uh, there is a rise in criminal activity. We are not emboldening our RCMP. It seems like uh, more and more uh, the perpetrators have more rights than those of us who honor the laws. In a, in a day and age like this, we're not teaching young people what it means to be truly Canadian. I actually think we do have an identity. Our identity was founded in truth and integrity. And we have got to start returning some of those values and teaching those values in school rather than some of the misappropriated things that are being taught in school these days. Teach kids that their identity is real and powerful and strong. And that just one person can change a nation if they will understand the power of one. Give them an identity and you won't have suicide. somehow it's wrong to be who you are, that your identity is flawed. That's, I reject that absolutely. I reject that belief. I reject that concept. I reject the story. We all belong. We all belong. Everyone belongs with who they are. We should support each other. And if we're talking about suicide amongst you, then we need to talk about a national suicide prevention plan. We need to talk about mental health and supports that people need. People are underfunded for mental health supports. We need to talk about that. Not about school education. Of course, school education is fundamentally important. We're talking about national suicide rates that are rising. We need to talk about how we solve that problem. Uh, we also need to address the fact that there's hopelessness. When you don't have a future, it tears down your ability to, to see a future for yourself. Indigenous communities are one of the hardest hit communities when it comes to, to youth suicide. We need to tackle these problems. senior moment here. But the, um, the solution is, is not, is through education. We have, I'm proposing giving grade 10, 11, 12 students an allowance. Now you wonder why, but they have to participate in the arts and dance and music and sports and yoga, writing, water sports, winter sports, hockey, figure skating, curling, tennis. I built racquetball courts and squash courts and tennis clubs. And there's nothing better than having children participating in sports. Thank you, Tim. We have time now for the candidates to make their closing remarks. They have one minute each for their closing remarks, and we're going to be going in reverse order. So we'll be starting with Richard. Uh, thank you much. Uh, uh, really, this is a democracy in action. Uh, we, we heard so many uh, uh, proposals and, and questions. Uh, we try to answer the questions. And there are many uh, familiar faces here, as I mentioned. I have been uh, working together, uh, of course, with Stephen as uh, the organization. Um, I supported the SMLA uh, for the Meals on Meals program, uh, Family uh, Life uh, Institute, uh, Burnaby Multicultural Suicide. In fact, I co founded uh, the Burnaby uh, Volunteer Festival uh, 16 years ago uh, with uh, Volunteer Burnaby. So I'm, uh, I'm, I've been here for 32 years. I know the need of the, the community. I want to be uh, your strong voice so that we can connect to continue those, uh, those programs uh, uh, in the community, getting the get, uh, national, the, the federal support in order to Burnaby South to get the fair share. I mentioned about transition house. 
also uh, important as well. How is the program is important? Thank you.
Thank you. And oh, sorry, the last thing, not uh, very important, uh, not uh, this important, is uh, uh, it's about the contribution. Uh, you can transfer to uh, Zubo at gmail.com. Thank you. Thank you well, thank you, Stephen, for moderating this event, and thank you, Antonio, for uh, arranging this uh, great debate. We are all here, all the candidates and all of you out there are here because we care. We care about Burnaby South, we care about the future of Burnaby South. As a person that grew up here, that have served the community as a business lawyer, helping the small businesses here, and you know, with the, where my parents live here as well, I want to make sure that Burnaby is going to be a Burnaby that I knew when I was growing up. Burnaby that I know is that if you work hard and if you Given the opportunities, you can be successful. The, the, the Burnaby that I want to see going forward, the Canada that I, that I want to see, is that we, I want to ensure that our children can believe that through their hard work and through opportunities that they create, they can also be successful. We can only do that by lowering taxes so that we can keep more of our tax money in our pocket to get ahead, not just get by. Thank you, Jay. On behalf of Burnaby Inter Agency, I'd like to thank the candidates very much for coming out today. Also, for running for public office, we know that's a significant uh, commitment, and we appreciate you taking the time to do that. We'd also like to thank all of you for coming out today. I will be the first to acknowledge we did not get even close to the beginning, the, 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 the tip of the iceberg in terms of the questions that you had. Some fantastic questions. I'm sorry if we didn't get to ask yours, but we really appreciate you participating today and being so open to the ideas that were presented. Thank you very much. Have a great evening. Make sure you